Back with us on the Sunrise Morning Show is Stephen Howard from In Defense of Christians. Stephen, welcome back. Thank you, Andy. Good to be with you again. It is good to have you back. And we're going to be talking about the situation of Coptic Christians in Egypt. And I know that IDC is constantly keeping an eye on things in Egypt. October 9th marked nine years since uh, a massacre of 24 Coptic Christians in Egypt. Have things improved since that tragedy? That's a very difficult question to answer. In, in some senses, things certainly have improved. Um, at that massacre, uh, the Mespira massacre, uh, we had seen Egyptian military actually attack uh, directly uh, Coptic Christians who were peacefully protesting. We saw the anchor of a television news channel calling for Egyptian civilians to join the Egyptian military in actually essentially to protect the Egyptian military from the Coptic Christians. I mean, it was really a shocking incident. Mm -hmm. So it is completely correct to say that things have improved uh, since, since that since, by that standard, but there are so many prevalent issues that, that Coptic Christians continue to face. It would be, um, it would be incorrect to say that things are, are perfect or great or ideal for them. Well, what are the, the biggest concerns that you all have at IDC? Well, the reality is, in Egypt, Coptic Christians basically live as, as second-class citizens. Um, right now in Egypt, um, the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom uh, has noted that there's about one mosque for every 820 Muslims in Egypt and one church for every 2,430 Christians, wow. which is roughly a 320% uh, percent disparity. Furthermore, uh, when uh, mobs attack Christians, when there are hate crimes against Christians, uh, they are rarely prosecuted. Um, it should be noted in the massacre I just told you about, it, that happened nine years ago, not one single officer in the military or anyone has been charged for killing 24 Coptic Christians right. and injuring hundreds. So there are some glaring shortcomings uh, in the Egyptian uh, justice system. What about the Egyptian government? Well, in terms of representation, uh, there is a, a Coptic governor uh, in e Egypt now, which is an improvement. But Coptic Christians do tend to be um, underrepresented at the highest levels of government, especially uh, when it comes to uh, to the chief most, the uppermost security positions uh, in, in the country. So there's a, a great deal of progress to be made uh, in the representation as well. Now, I know that the acting administrator of USAID just visited Egypt last week. What have we heard from him about his discussions with Coptic leaders there? Well, I, I think Administrator John Barsta uh, did the right thing, and uh, that is that he, he didn't merely go to, to Cairo and to Alexandria, and, and you know he didn't merely go to the pyramids and, and do a bunch of meaningless photo ops. He mm -hmm. actually went down... Uh, to many a province, which has really been the epicenter uh, of, of Christian persecution uh, in Egypt. Uh, this is in Upper Egypt, which is, is, is to say uh, south of, of Egypt's uh, major cities, and it is really where we've seen some of the most glaring in, uh, incidents of, of persecution take place. So he went there. He even uh, prayed at the, uh, at, at, at the Church of the Coptic Martyrs of, of Libya. You might remember uh, back in 2015, uh, over 20 Christians were, were uh, barbarically beheaded uh, on a beach in Libya. Uh, those, those Christians, they were actually migrant workers from this province of Egypt. So he went there and he, he prayed at that church. He met with local uh, Christian leaders, uh, faith leaders. He even met with uh, an affiliate of, of Coptic Orphans, uh, which is an organization that we proudly support uh, that helps young Coptic uh, Orphans, and especially in this case, he, they met with a group of young women who had been the recipients of scholarships. Uh, so this, this was a, a, a welcome improvement. Uh, in the past, you know, unfortunately, the U.S. in many cases has been kind of pleased with sometimes superficial gestures. About a year ago, Egypt opened the largest Christian cathedral in the Middle East in Cairo, which sounds very nice. 
Uh, but the reality is this cathedral was opened up basically in the middle of the desert where no Christians actually live. Hmm. So it was a bit disappointing to see policymakers praising that. But what we saw this last week with the acting administrator going uh, to where persecution actually takes place, to where Christians actually live. You know, many a province, in addition to being the epicenter of persecution, is also where you have the largest concentration of Coptic Christians outside Cairo. So that is the type of diplomacy that, that really helps, because it also shows Egyptian authorities that America is watching, and America wants to see improvement in many a province. And how would you encourage the American government to to continue to to send that message to the Egyptians? Well, it, it really starts with uh, with, with accountability. Uh, Egypt is the second largest recipient of U.S. Uh, defense assistance after Israel. We have a, a remarkable degree of influence uh, over uh, over Egyptian policy and politics. Um, current President uh, Abdel Fattah al Sisi has no uh, members of Congress. Uh, and U.S. Uh, officials well before his ascension to the presidency. Uh, and so uh, he understands the, the dynamic and the politics here. Uh, we have to really hold them accountable. Uh, it should not take, you know, the, the bureaucratic hurdles that, that are necessary for, for churches even to be built and constructed um, are, are, are outdated and tedious. There are many villages in, in many a province where Christians pray in the streets, because their churches can't get built. Um, there are incidents where, um, you know, to be honest with you, there, 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 there was even a woman, believe it or not, an, old, an elderly woman, who was dragged through the streets naked mm. uh, in, in, in response to her son having, um, having an affair with the Muslim woman. And the men who stripped the woman's clothes and dragged her around naked were never prosecuted. Uh, so there are some real issues here. Their cops are not even allowed to play on the national Egyptian soccer team. So they're truly treated as second-class citizens. So uh, the work that needs to be done is, is I mean, there's a shortage of, of, of initiatives and efforts that the U.S. needs to undertake. We've been talking to Stephen Howard of In Defense of Christians. And, Stephen, if listeners want to find out more information about this and all of the other issues that you all handle with In Defense of Christians all around the world, where can they get more info? Please visit our website at indefensivechristians.org. You can find that linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. Really appreciate the information you gave us today, Stephen. Thanks for covering the issue, Annie. You bet. You bet. All right, it's 11 till. Danielle Bean joins us next.